Okay, now we're in the Calvin cycle. Now the Calvin cycle is called the uh, in the light independent reactions, and it happens inside the stroma. So the stroma is the space inside the chloroplast. Um, previously, the light dependent reactions took place inside the actual um, thylakoids and in the thylakoid membrane and the thylakoid space. And remember, the things that came out of the light independent reactions were primarily this molecule here, NADPH and ATP. And these are going to be used to run the Calvin cycle. Think of them like the coins that we have to put into the washing machine to make the actual thing uh, run. So uh, what do we need? Well, the Calvin cycle, the goal is to convert carbon dioxide into organic molecules like glucose and glucose will be turned into starch, basically. So we're going to start with carbon dioxide. And carbon dioxide has one carbon, so we're going to put one little carbon right there. And what happens is carbon dioxide is going to come in and it's going to join together with a five carbon compound called rubulose bisphosphate. bisphosphate. But you can be cool and just call it RUBP. This actual reaction here is one of the most common reactions that happens on Earth, basically carbon dioxide being combined here. So uh, we give it a few names. We can call it carbon fixation here. And it's a carbox, carboxylation reaction. And this reaction is catalyzed by a special enzyme called, and this is a mouthful as well, rubulose bisphosphate carboxylase, but you can call it rubisco. And uh, it's really special, and there's large amounts of rubisco that are actually present here. So this is one of the most common enzymes um, if you had to add up all the uh, enzymes that exist on earth rubisco is one of the most common ones here and the carbon dioxide is going to diffuse into the chloroplast entering the leaves through the stomata but you should know a little bit of that already so immediately what happens is these two join together to form a temporary six carbon compound but it immediately splits you can break it down further but for this level right now uh, this is fine so these the, they join together to form a temporary six carbon compound and that six carbon compound immediately splits into uh, two three carbon compounds so it splits in half and that three carbon compound is called glycerate three phosphate uh, you can be cool and call it GP as well too so these are small details here but the big picture is remember carbon dioxide we're gonna combine it and we're gonna have to come up with glucose at the end here somehow and then what else do we need here uh, well this glycerate 3 phosphate is going to be converted into another it's going to be slightly changed a little bit um, into something called triose triose phosphate and that's TP triose phosphate and here's where the molecules that we made in the light dependent reactions are going to become important because NADPH is going to come in and donate some hydrogen ATP is going to come in and help to power this process a little bit and then we regenerate a little bit of NADP plus this is very important um, if you've just watched the previous video and ATP will be turned into ADP basically and we can call this a reduction reaction because the NADPH is donating hydrogen to GP so we're actually reducing GP so this is a reduction reaction over here um, now what's gonna happen here is basically these tri these triose phosphate molecules are gonna be combined into glucose or some of them are going to be used to regenerate RUBP over here. And uh, basically, there's a lot of math that's involved here. But uh, if you want to know some of the details or if you write about some details, for every six molecules of TP that are formed, five will be used to regenerate RUBP up here. And then one will go into a pile and they'll accumulate basically to turn into glucose. So, oops, these little guys here. So five will go up there and then one's gonna stay in this stack over here. And then eventually down here, these extras will be accumulated and turned into glucose phosphate. And then the glucose phosphate can uh, form together. This is just a simple condensation reaction where glucose molecules combine to form starch. So that's basically it. If you wanna know some of the math involved here, uh, there's a bunch of reactions here that are showing how we actually go from three carbon a three carbon molecule back into a five carbon molecule and ATP is used again to help in this process of reconversion so it is a cycle so we have to regenerate this so that carbon dioxide mm. has something to actually join with to continue through this process here so that is the Calvin cycle 
big picture wise just remember this is carbon dioxide basically turning into glucose carbon dioxide turning into glucose and the main two players are NADPH and ATP that are guiding this process and this enzyme that helps to do this initial joining um, so you will see later in some of the videos that we're talking about limiting factors if this enzyme is inhibited somehow for example by I don't know really high temperatures really high temperatures can um, deform enzymes denature enzymes and so if this thing is actually denatured and then this process can actually happen then that's gonna stop all of uh, the Calvin cycle so we're not gonna produce any more glucose so that's one of the reasons why temperature is really important also you need you need to make sure there's enough carbon dioxide um, to actually run this whole process so that is the Calvin cycle stick to big picture GP TP glucose phosphate TP <laughs> all right that's it